streaming uh, live on Facebook, right? Yeah, we're all set. Perfect. Okay, so mm -hmm. I, uh, I'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> um, just kind of a brief intro to Palm Beach Tech and then um, for anybody that's watching on Facebook and then uh, we can get going. Um, so for anybody that doesn't know, my name is Nikki. Uh, I'm the VP of Development with Palm Beach Tech. And I know we've got Joe on here, who's our CEO and president. We've also got Monica, she's in my top left corner. Um, she is our event specialist. And then our new and wonderful uh, summer intern, Allie, is also on this call. Um, and basically, uh, what we're going to be talking about today is just resources for parents now that we are done with school. And I'm sure that a lot of us, you know, with the summer camps closing, um, a lot of them are not going to be opening or opening to full capacity um, and not really sure with the coronavirus still here, what's going to be going on. So we brought on um, a bunch of uh, great people that are involved in our local South Florida community to talk about what resources that we have virtually. Um, even some of them I know are kind of partially, partially virtual. Um, but yeah, just to give us uh, parents uh, like myself a uh, better idea of what we're going to be doing. Um, and just a you know brief overview of Palm Beach Tech, we are a, a tech nonprofit based here in Palm Beach County. Um, we actually just announced about, I think, two, two and a half weeks ago that we are becoming a South Florida um, organization, so regional to bring together our South Florida community. Yep, yay, Todd, that's like big news for us. So uh, been working on that for a while now. Um, and so, yeah, we, you know, work with our local community leaders, um, our uh, local headquartered companies, um, you know, workforce and develop workforce development talent um, with a lot of the colleges, universities, I mean, anybody that we can just to bring our South Florida tech community together. Um, whole goal and mission is to build South Florida into a tech hub. So hopefully that's what we've been doing um, over the last five years. We're about to have our fifth year anniversary in July. So that's big news as well. Um, but yeah, I want to, uh, I don't want to have us wait too much longer. So I want to get going into the conversation. Um, I guess if we can start off just by having each of our speakers, I mean, even the thought leaders that are in the discussion today, just introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about what you all do. And then, uh, yeah, we can get started. Do you, uh, I'm trying to go who's the top of my screen. Ashley, do you want to start? With a brief sure, introduction? sure. Sure. Um, my name's Ashley. Um, I own a company called Code Teachers, which is uh, geared at teaching coding, design, robotics, maker, YouTube classes, things like that. And I would say that um, I'm also a mom and I'm always looking for fun activities to do for my kids as well. I actually had a lot of fun putting this together, but there's, um, you know, it's all about just kind of finding ways yeah. to fill our brains with great information. I've got a uh, Chris next on my screen. Hi, um, my name is Chris and I work at the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium. I'm the Assistant Director of Education over there. Wonderful, next one on my screen is I've got Allie Kaufman. Oh, you're still on a I'm mute, Allie. there you go. <laughs> I'm that guy. Um, so I'm Allie Kaufman. I am the founder and CEO of Space of Mind in Delray Beach. And Perfect. So and those, Ashley, Chris, and Allie are actually our uh, panelists this morning, but then we also have uh, Todd and Cedric, which I'd like you to introduce yourselves as well. Todd, if you would like to go first. Hey, I'm Todd Albert. I'm the, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. I'm the founder and the um, lead teacher at Boca Code, which is more geared towards adults, but I'm also a dad. I have kids um, 20, 16, and 10. Um, my 20-year-old is currently working as a camp counselor down to my 10-year-old who is hopefully wants to attend that camp. So, you know, I'm coming at it from that perspective, not from, not from the, I have resources as a, as a, leader in the community, but as a parent. Perfect. Thank you, Todd. And Cedric. <laughs> Hi. Um, as you know, my name is Cedric. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Dawson Digital Art School. Um, I was in the education system for eight and a half years teaching, and uh, we started summer camps, and now we're online. So um, this summer, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of parents, um, even, you know, I still am teaching online remotely. So I kind of have both perspectives of 
being in the classroom, having a summer camp, and then doing the virtual online. So we have an online school. Um, we also provide resources um, for parents, but just like you guys, I'm also a parent. I have three boys. Um, mm -hmm. They're all much younger than your kids. I'm five, four, and then 10 months. So we're trying to stay, ball. yeah, exactly, <laughs> trying to stay busy. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be part of this conversation and, and thank you for inviting me. Wonderful, thank you. And um, uh, I was gonna ask uh, either Ali or Monica, um, if one of you can assist too with just watching any comments that are on Facebook Live to make sure that we can uh, call them out here. Um, but I wanted to just start off um, by just talking about, I guess the obvious is a lot of parents right now, uh, we've already had a lot of higher stress levels in the house is trying to figure, I know Allie Coffin was just talking about that on one of our recent um, community coffees. Um, you know, a lot of the stress levels in the households, you know, are a little bit higher right now. The kids, you know, were stressed with school, the parents were stressed with trying to be teachers, but now we're kind of in the next stage of that now that school's done. Um, like I was mentioning before, is a lot of the summer camps and activities that we typically have our kids in over the summer are not at full capacity or closed. I know in my community, um, I got a personal phone call from the, the local camp that said, I really apologize, but we are not having camp this summer, so you're going to have to figure out another alternative. So um, wanted to just kind of open up the, the conversation with the question of, you know, for those that are parents here, what are you all doing? And then maybe something um, that would be good for our parents to look into, uh, depending on um, different age ranges. Whoever would like to start it first is fine. Do we count as parents too? Or do we, um, do you want us just to serve more to answer questions? Say that again, Ashley, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just wondering, um, do you want us to speak as parents as well or just as panelists? In other words, I have a no, few ideas. No, of course, I'm both, yeah, because I know you guys are uh, both of those roles, so that's perfectly fine. Okay, um, well, just to kick it off for myself, um, one of the things that I did with, with my kids, just knowing that we're not gonna have regular camp this year in person, um, with my son, I said, okay, well, this summer we're gonna build an app together. So we're working actually on a React Native app together and we're planning out all the pieces of it. So obviously that's a little more sophisticated than some parents, but I could maybe start off with. But I think the thought is if, if you were going to start a business or create, if, if your child were going to go into the real world, what would you want them to know? And that's kind of the approach that I took with my kids. I thought, okay, well, let's create a project plan. Let's build an idea, so, you know, separate of any camps or anything, but just kind of thinking creatively and, and creating some experiences that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. Um, I can say for space of mind, we're actually, we are opening for on-person, on-site camp. Um, I put together an advisory of four physicians and one parent who's also a scientist and um, because we have a 10,000 square foot campus and the ability to divide the campus into five um, wings that each have their own entrance, bathroom and air conditioner unit, we've got um, five small groups of eight. Each group would have um, uh, two coaches with them. So it's a really low ratio, um, four to one. And so we are opening for camp on site, um, as well as some virtual programs as well. But the virtual space just seems really, really crowded right now. So we figured that, um, that since we are able to open as safely as possible, we're going to do that. Yeah, when I was looking around for ideas, you know, I looked at some that, are, that have cost and then a lot that are free. And I've noticed that a lot of companies like Google, I, I have a little spread, uh, presentation to go with it, but Google, Maker, a lot of them are offering free activities to do online. So they've compiled some great resources. Honestly, I was having a lot of fun. I was like, I want to do this stuff. It looks awesome. They have something from Wonderopolis where you can, you know, kind of engineer some ideas. Um, Maker has tons of Maker projects that you can order little um, components and then have them shipped to the house and follow along with the virtual program. Um, for code teachers, um, we may offer some things in person. It's still kind of to be determined based on um, how comfortable parents feel. But right now ours is primarily online and we have um, 
kind of a Shark Tank style, a YouTuber program, coding, and then a design hybrid track where it's coding, design, and YouTube online. But I really tried to be unselfish in preparation for this and think through just what a parents need to help them. And I think the primary thing is, what do you do when you need a caregiver to be at home? Because it's, it's fine, it's easy for us that have older kids because they can just do some of these fun activities online. But what do you do when you need someone to be there with your child and it maybe can't be you? Um, so I was trying to think of some creative solutions for those parents as well. Um, there's lots of fun activities we can do with them, but you may need to bring in you know, a caregiver as well from you know, maybe care.com or something like that to, to just supervise your child part of the day. So do you want us to share presentations, Nikki, or um, I did compile a few things, but I don't want to, you know, dominate the, the top either. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to let you guys do that. I, um, I actually wanted to ask um, Chris really quickly, too, was I saw online you guys are going to be opening up um, the, uh, the museum also, right, for partial mm -hmm. or is it just for members? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we are currently open to the public. Um, we're, we're following the guidelines for limited capacity, um, social distancing inside. Uh, we have our brand new amphitheater outside that we're doing a bunch of demonstrations and stuff on. So you have a nice open area to watch stuff in. Um, we are requiring masks be worn for anybody over the age of two uh, if you do come to the Science Center. But um, we're mostly open. We do have a few of the more interactive exhibits that are still kind of closed off just until we can figure out a way to safely reincorporate those. Um, but the Science Center is open. Uh, we will be having, um, again, some limited in-person camps starting the last week of June. Um, but until then, we have uh, a bunch of other resources that, um, that I'd be happy to share with as part of this conversation. Um, and have you guys been doing uh, any like virtual offerings or anything as well? Mm -hmm. We did. Uh, for the last two months, we've been doing all of our programs that were originally um, scheduled. We, we've just been offering a virtual uh, version of that. And we've been doing most of them at no cost just because it's, you know, we, we didn't feel right charging for something that, um, that, like you said, there's a bunch of free resources online and we were just trying to, to help out and um, give people something to learn and something to do. Um, we have a really good program called GEMS, which is Girls Excelling at Math and Science, awesome. uh, that we um, kind of translated into our virtual GEMS program and it's been going really well. Uh, it's on um, Tuesdays. There's one the last Tuesday of the month, and there's one the second Tuesday of the month. And they'll keep doing that throughout the summer virtually. Um, we are going to be doing some virtual summer camps. Uh, they just started this week, actually. We had, I think, 12 students for our first virtual summer camp, um, which is kind of cool. And um, we're trying to keep things as you know, fresh as we possibly can at the Science Center in person. We're coming up with new events and uh, different things to do to get people, you know, out and doing something, but again, safely uh, following the guidelines. Um, so yeah, we're just, you know, everybody's trying to figure out how do we contribute to, uh, to our community and, and inspire that curiosity and keep everybody from going stir crazy, but also keep them, you know, safe and, and mm -hmm. considering the public safety issue of things. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is a lot of the stuff that we did over the over the uh, kind of shelter in place, whatever you want to call it, um, was funded by an organization called Prime Time of Palm Beach County. And if you've worked with any out of school um, organizations, then you probably already know the name. Uh, but they were really, really uh, kind of foundational to a lot of the programming that we were able to offer over those last couple months. We put a bunch of activities together online on our website um, that were designed to be done at home with you know, minimal materials. Um, and um, we were able to do that because they kind of funded us to do that. And they are doing a virtual camp. Um, so all of their 
learning opportunity providers. Um, we're part of that. We've got places like the um, uh, CCE, the um, Children's Creative Education, um, the Lake Worth Playhouse. There's all different kinds of, of people that are involved with that, different organizations that, that do different activities, Florida Fishing Academy, um, and they are all putting together stuff to offer for this virtual primetime summer camp. So it'll be a different activity every day. Um, it'll be offered for free. Um, and you can go on and, and see all those resources, see all the different activities, and it'll hopefully give you uh, something to do and maybe a little inspiration on another project to kind of take on um, for your family while you all have some time off together. That's great. Yeah. And um, I wanted to actually ask each of you was, you know, there's a lot of different resources online that are shared, but I think at least for me and I, a lot of my uh, close friends that are, um, we're a little confused with like, you know, not only just where to find the resources, but what's age appropriate. And like, you know, Ashley was actually mentioning a lot of people at home, depending on what your home situation is like, there's probably some resources that are available there, but some the kids have to have help with and other ones you can kind of let them go freely, you know, in whatever the platform is. Um, can each of you talk uh, a little bit about just age appropriateness for like some of the different offerings that you guys have? Sure, I'll go real quick and then I'll turn it over. Um, so our, our virtual camps, they are gonna be for ages seven to 12, um, but a lot of the activities that we've already put together, uh, we have a bunch of um, instructional videos and stuff online that came out of this prime time project that we did. They're all broken down by age range and we've got um, you know, a, a list of activities for kindergarten through second grade at a level, um, third through fifth grade and then sixth through eighth grade. And that's true as well for all of the primetime um, activities, all the different primetime sites that participated in that. And the uh, website for that is primetimepbc.org. You wanna check that out and they have, it's all split up by those age groups, everybody that participated in that. Uh, so um, I can say for our, programs that are on campus in Delray. Um, we've got programs broken out by kids, tweens, and teens. So our kids' ages are between about six and 10. Um, the tweens are kind of like 10 to 14, and teens are sort of like 13, 14 to 18, 19. Sort of just depends on the kid. So we have no hard and fast line where the ages cut off. Um, and our virtual programs um, will be for the same ages as well. Um, and we have different uh, week-long programs, um, theater, engineering, coding, um, debate. Uh, we were doing a Kindness Matters Week um, with the Kindness Matters Foundation. So the teen group in there is gonna be launching their own charity in a week. And the younger groups are gonna be doing creative service projects. Uh, we also have a six week long um, teen yoga teacher training program where they'll be um, trained in the ROYS 200 um, yoga certification program and a three-week scuba camp. Um, and our theater camps are going to do one-week mashups of Hamilton and Newsies. And we've got a full culinary arts program, art, you know, full, ah, there you go. It's there you go, Todd. <laughs> nice shirt. Um, so, uh, so we've got a whole, you know, culinary program, art, engineering, music, songwriting, um, everything that's a part of our creative arsenal will have its place on the summer schedule. That's actually awesome, Allie. And I love the fact that you're including STEAM over just STEM. You've got a little bit of everything in there, which is great. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah that's awesome. And I you know, also, you mentioned you have a lot of offerings for the older kids as well, which is great. We do. Absolutely. You know, a lot of the sleepaway camps and day camps that um, high schoolers were going to work at have been canceled. So... Um, so we definitely have an amazing teen program. We're offering a one week long workshop in how to work in a restaurant. Um, so we're, we're partnering with the Delray restaurants, teaching teens how to, um, how to, you know, work front and back of the house. Um, and so, and then we also have a regular summer study hall. So for any students who need to either get remediation, catch up, work on college um, applications, uh, we're open for summer school as well. How many students can you handle this summer? 
Um, we'll be able to handle 53 students a day in each week. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's gonna be a nice, um, a nice opportunity. The groups won't be intermingling um, unless they're outside for fitness or food, but um, every group will be small and, and together. Could I chime in next? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I typed the message. I thought it was to you, Nikki, um, but I guess it went to everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, we're like a Head Start program for kids in middle school to high school. Um, this summer, it's actually going to be a two-week um, course uh, where kids can learn how to paint. They'll do a landscape painting. Um, they'll learn how to do computer animation, um, 3D modeling, and um, uh, graphic design. So that's middle school to high school. And there might, I don't think there really needs to be any sort of like adult supervision. Um, we give them instructions on how to download the software, which is free. And then for ages two through 10, um, what's funny is um, like, I know a lot of parents, and it's not really funny. Um, a, a lot of parents are, are, are struggling with like finding things to do. And because me and my wife are both artists, we were just like, well, what do we, you know, do? Like, you know, we, we get creative, right? Like as most of you guys do. So we uh, actually created a uh, YouTube kid show um, within the, the beginning of the coronavirus. We broke from like zero subscribers to almost 500. Um, and that's just, you know, reaching out to friends and family. And so my wife is a character spotty dotty and we created, you know, Father's Day episodes. We created Mother's Day episodes. Um, and so she's actually going to do a live painting, dance, singing, and, you know, for kids ages two to five and then from six to 10. Um, so that's kind of how, you know, we're entertaining our kids simultaneously while, you know, helping out the community. Um, you know, we, again, like we, we like, we just like you guys, we're looking for different activities. We're just like, well, we can create the activity. So um, that's what we have to offer. So I wanted to, to share that with you guys. Nikki, I wanted to chime in for a second also, and just kind of back the conversation up just a little bit and talk to the parents out there that I think that when you're looking for resources, you know, think about there's three possibilities of, of what you could be looking for. You know, like Ali is offering um, in person and, and Chris has a lot of in person too. And that's a good way, like get your kids out of the house and, and involved in something. Some of you might be, you know, still leery about that or there's very limited programs. I know that, you know, like the YMCA is opening up with limited capacity for camps. A lot of the camps are opening up this week with limited capacity, but they're already full. Um, so, you know, that's just one thing. There's also, you know, so everything else is more virtual or, you know, or directed at home. And then with that, so there's virtual resources like what Chris and Cedric are offering. Um, but then there's also, you know, self-directed stuff that whether it's with a parent or without, and that would depend on your kids. So, you know, some of the things that Cedric is saying, you know, like doing art with your kids or, you know, like some of the activities, um, you know, there are, there are like inventor kits that you can order online um, from super simple to really advanced, made geared more towards, towards adults where you're programming circuit boards and making robots and things. Um, whether, you know, and you can, the, your kid might be interested in that stuff. So maybe look with your child, look with each kid and figure out what's best for them, whether it's doing crafts with them. Um, I also, um, I mean, you know, one of my sons just got a job working for a friend for the summer. His, he's opening his business. He needs, you know, he has to redo inventory. It's great. Nobody wants to do inventory. So they're hiring high school kids to do that, which is great. Um, and, you know, also, um, I just finished doing this weekend, there's this, uh, this program called the Great International Scavenger Hunt, if any of you have ever heard of it, or GISH. And, you know, it would, it just, there was a short one that just ended this weekend. There's a longer one in August that over 150,000 participants worldwide do. Whether you want to do that and involve your kids or not, there's a ton of really cool activities there. If you're out of ideas, you can look and maybe challenge your kid, give your kid a list of like 10 really hard challenges and be like, here, see how many you could accomplish this week. 
and then let them go. You know, if you're, so I think it also depends for, you know, parent to parent, kid, kid to kid, how much you're going to be, um, you know, being able to supervise them, how much supervision they are going to want or how much can they self-direct. So just keep those things in mind. That's awesome. I, I mean, everything that you guys said, I think sounds so exciting. Um, Nikki, is it okay if I share something really quickly? Yes, of or? course. Yes. Okay. Sure. Um, like what Todd was saying, I agree that we can create some kind of cool experiences. So I think a lot of us are creative and, you know, it sounds like there's even some artists on here, which is awesome. So I was actually thinking of this idea of making the house kind of feel like a camp. So printing out some things around the house that say like camp and then whatever the name is. <clears throat> and there's a lot of free um, kits. This particular one is paid or you can make something, but I thought it would be so fun. And I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna decorate um, one side of the house and kind of call it our camp zone. It's our learning and creative maker space. Um, but when I was putting together a few ideas, I <clears throat> looked around, I just did it really quickly in Canva because I use this tool with the kids sometimes besides Photoshop, sorry, present, come on. Um, so when I was looking around, I thought, well, what would I think would be, what would I find to be fun? And obviously there's code teachers, which I already mentioned, and we have this idea, you want to be a YouTuber, et cetera. Um, but then I also found this Camp Google and they have a four week free event where it combines information from NASA, National Geographic, Khan Academy. Um, there was also this one called Wendopolis, which I'll show you. It might be easier to flip through them. I have the tabs open. Um, come on, escape over here. This was the maker one. It looked pretty fun. So they call it Family Maker Camp. And it's actually free. Um, they, you know, I don't know if you go to the Maker Fair ever, but they have some really cool kits that are free that you can do. I, I was thinking recently, you know, I, I don't know about you, but a lot of us tech people were extremely busy the last few weeks, um, keeping everything going. And I was thinking this summer, I'm gonna try and make an experience that the kids will never forget. So although I'm gonna work a lot, just like usual, I'm gonna try to find something every day to make it a fun experience for the kids. And I thought one is kind of theming the house Two is making sure we get outside at least some of the time and then going on and doing some of these activities. This is one I've actually used with the kids before. It's free and it's created by Pixar. And it's all about how they do the rigging and the 3D animation for movies. Um, I found it to be so fun personally. A lot of the stuff that I think is fun, the kids also have fun. And you know, there's a lot that we can learn too as parents. And you know, just as regular people, there's so much free information and paid information out there that brings tons of value. One of the, I think, most fun paid sites out there is this one. It's called um, DIY. <clears throat> it used to be called Jam. You probably saw it <clears throat> advertised. They have tons and tons of things like drawing. Sounds like we have that covered with Cedric, but um, photography, machines, strange science. So, I mean, you can do some really simple projects with your kids. Just grab Diet Coke and Mentos, put them in, you know, you create an explosion. They're never going to forget these things. And this could actually end up being their best summer ever. It doesn't have to be terrible because we're stuck at home. We could actually kind of try to, try to leverage this time that we may not have had otherwise. You know, Code.org has a lot of free um, fun activities. Um, that one was uh, Tech Uni. Code Academy, um, I've personally used this. I use this with the kids also. They have a, a whole free track where they do actual coding and scripting. Um, maybe a little more advanced. I know you mentioned age breakout, Nikki. So I'm gonna make sure to put on Code Teacher's website um, curated list by age because they have activities um, on the iPad, Scratch Junior and things like that that you don't have to be able to read. That's like two to five, two to six, somewhere in there. Um, and then there's all these activities that include videos where kids can kind of watch and participate. And then depending on, you know, maybe a little prep time, there's some kits you can order too. So that maybe that's more of a midsummer activity. But personally, I'm going to decorate the house. I'm going to set up backyard movies, um, do slime, science, you know, get messy and just have fun with the kids. And then 
I think the biggest challenge is the ones that need it on site. And it sounds like Allie and, and Chris's program sounds so fun. Um, you know, those sound like great opportunities. Code teachers may have some later in the summer. Right now, we're all virtual um, just for safety. Um, but I definitely think there's tons of cool resources out there on Mommy Poppins. Um, they have a curated list. We have one on code teachers. And let me see if I missed any other cool ones just from talking so fast. DIY, DIY, I told you, found tons and tons of lists of science projects and STEAM projects. Um, but I think the point is we're only limited by our imagination because if you get the kids involved, like Todd mentioned, they're gonna think of things we didn't even consider. So, you know, let's just have some fun, you know, be creative. And I think it would be so neat. I'm not sure how you feel about it, Nikki, but maybe us parents could connect together. And if, if people weren't afraid to be together in person, we could even create some theme days, you know, like, hey, let's get together next Monday and do this activity. And then Todd takes next week and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, we hey, don't of... put me on anything. <laughs> I'm no, but Ashley, what already something you just you out, said? Todd. <laughs> <laughs> something you just said. You said, you know, involving the kids in in yeah. figuring out what to do. What what I found, and and I know my ki most of my kids are a bit older than a lot of the people who are watching around the panel, but particularly, I mean, all of my kids. When when you involve them in the process, they feel you know they they feel a um more uh i'm trying to look for the word but they don't feel like you're forcing them to do they're like it like empowered they're empowered yeah right? but but yeah. they they also for feel more like they they um god i'm sorry i'm committed i think is the word i'm looking for you know instead of like you telling them this is what you're doing today or this is what you're doing this week you when you ask them to be involved then they kind of feel like okay well i already committed to this so they're more likely to, to follow through than if you say, if you schedule them out, um, you know, they, you might find some resistance to certain things. So I find less I resistance. You, Todd. Yeah. I agree with you. I, I was thinking the same thing as you were talking, Ashley, because I think this is a, a really good opportunity to allow the kids to kind of make their own decisions and see kind of, kind of lead us in figuring out what they're interested in. And I think that, you know, like for instance, we just took my daughter out and um, she's never mentioned robotics before ever. And her and my son were like, they're, they've been out here for hours now this morning playing with some tarantula robot that shoots stuff and whatever. And I would have never offered that to my daughter, but allowing them to go into the store and choose things and see what they're interested in. Now I'm kind of like, oh, great. I have a girl that likes robots. This is awesome. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think it, it, it does. It, I think that's a perfect example, Todd, is that it really does allow them to, like when you were talking, I was thinking it's kind of like staff with an employee, you know, with the management, involve your staff in the bigger picture, let them kind of take the, the lead on what things they're interested in. And a lot of times you can get your staff, just like your kids, to be more creative, think outside the box and kind of be even a better loyal employee when they've got their hands in everything. So I think it's kind of similar with the kids. And, you know, Ashley, to your point, I feel like, you know, like I was saying earlier is that a lot of the kids, their stress levels were super high. I know my household was super high stress levels, even myself just trying to handle everything. But I think turning this into a good experience where we can get involved with it with the kids instead of finding activities like here you go to the side and just kind of keeping them busy that allowing actually ourselves to kind of take some time away get involved and do things with them that we could probably you know i don't know build better relationships with our kids have some fun experiences that they will remember i know you know even through all the stress it's actually been really really nice to have my kids home with me and to have a lot more time with them than i would normally um, cause sometimes, you know, I get jealous. The teachers have more time with my kids than I do. So I think this is a really good time to, to connect with them. I think you're very right on with that, Ashley. I love that. And I saw this, this, thank you. I saw this quote, I'm not going to get it exactly right, but it kind of stood out in my mind and it was the perspective that your kids could have about this time. It said something like, um, somebody might say, oh, people were losing their jobs and you know, they were worried about what we were going to do and what was tomorrow going to look like. But from a kid's perspective, it might be like, wow, I got to spend so much more time with my mom and my dad. And we were eating dinner together and we were talking, we watched movies, you know, we did things we never had the time to do before. So although this is a stressful time for some of us, it can also be, I, I know for sure, I'm going to try to stop today and make sure that I create a great summer for them 
And if, and to be honest, normally I'd be so busy doing summer camp. The kids helped me, of course, with it, but I'd be so busy a million hours, you know, that a lot of times you'd be like, oh my gosh, summer is gone, you know, so now this year we can do it a little more um, from a managed perspective. And I think um, even us teaming up together, you know, us that came to this meeting, we obviously care about this topic. So let's try and do it again, you know, midsummer or even sooner and get together. Um, there was one other thing I was going to mention, but I think, like you said, it was your point, Nikki, about involving the kids and Todd's too. I think this is our chance to kind of help them grow into a new perspective of leadership. If we have our own business, involve them, give them jobs. Um, they might come out more skilled than we even imagined. I'm, I worked for my parents' company and it changed my life. So, And, and Todd says he was not kidding about being involved if you want to schedule okay cool yeah. i was kidding i was Nikki, kidding <laughs> Got it. Nikki, sorry this is penny and i i appreciate the opportunity for cedric and i to sit in on this um of course i met cedric uh back when i was working for an art school and i was amazed at all of his rapport with the parents and the students and his skills are just beyond with the animation but our conversation really morphed um, into virtual platform and we've been talking about what can we do to expand his outreach and just listening to all of you um, to Todd's point I think ownership is really the word that I would use in a, in a business setting that the kids have ownership of it when they feel like they're part of the process and the decision making and I have an 11 year old and I have a 19 year old soon to be 20 in college so I see it from, you know, two different age groups, but, you know, whether it's girls at code or it's boys at code or, you know, adults at code, kids at code, whatever perspective you have, I think that having an ongoing conversation about the social responsibility of it, where the market trends are, where they can take their hobbies and their crafts and their passions into career mode, you can do that without having an overt conversation that feels so stressful for them or like you're being the show mom or show dad saying, you know, you got to think about college and you got to think about your future and you got instead make it a fun experience and give them the chance to really drive that conversation. And then naturally it will morph into what their future holds. So I think for me, the opportunity with this group for us is to continue this conversation, both with industry leaders and subject matter experts and people that are doing it today, but also to hear what the kids and the parents want to see and what their experiences are so that we can marry those worlds. And I, for one, with Cedric's platform being more focused on middle school and high school age, I would like to suggest maybe a biweekly discussion, you know, even if we do it in the evening or as a coffee talk or something, just to hear what's going on and to continue driving forward the conversation so we can evolve over time. We don't know what July is going to look like. We don't know what August. We certainly don't know what the fall or even next year is going to look like yet. But we know what we're seeing in this group. And I think it's a phenomenal resource for us to build upon. I agree. I, 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 I 100% agree with you. I'm oh, sorry. No, go I ahead. Go ahead, Ashley. Thing too, and I know this is a, a weird summer for this. But another thing uh, that we could get our kids to do is um, I believe Allie mentioned the kindness week, but doing, you know, some activities with our kids, like maybe helping out the homeless or making sure someone gets fed, you know, building in some opportunities to have them think about others, especially when they might not be around as many people as usual. Allie might have more on that, but um, my kids volunteer a lot to feed the homeless and I've noticed it makes them more grateful because they're like, whoa, I have a lot compared to this person and many times they want to bring some of their own stuff and give it to the kids they meet so I don't know it's just another idea too. No I, I love that I, I feel the same way I feel like you know giving them that opportunity to see what others live like or what other challenges other people face makes them look and pre appreciate what resources and what things are around them and certainly makes them kinder people um, I think that colleges today, just having gone through this experience with my daughter and, and now with the State of the Union, the way that it is, I think that college essays really focus a lot on what is the difference that they want to make in the world. So mm -hmm. why not start them thinking that at a young age? I mean, academics are important. Balance of art and, uh, and um, 
academics were always a very big part of our life. And as I volunteered in the different schools and got involved, you know, in the trenches for the last 15 years here in Palm Beach County with it, what I discovered with college application advisors, like I had the fortunate opportunity of doing some college fairs and working closely with the colleges and the guidance counselors, but also just seeing with the students, I think all around, it became more and more evident to me that making a difference in the world is really what the colleges are hoping for with these students. And now with everything that's upon us in, in this you know 2020 crazy virtual world that we live in, it becomes more important. So if we can guide them to fulfill their passions and they can talk about their experiences and what differences that they are going to make, it can be on the for-profit side as well as on the nonprofit side. But at the end of the day, it's about social responsibility and about doing what's right for the world and what's right for them and their family. And technology is gonna be part of that. So if we can use technology as a platform to give them those avenues to learn without even thinking about learning, I think it just makes a more well-rounded student altogether. I agree with you, Penny. And I, and I, you know, as you were saying that, we actually, as a staff, um, on Friday, we went to uh, Feeding South Florida. And as we were finished, I was thinking, like, that would be a perfect, you know, activity for, like, my son, because he's older in middle school. And, you know, just getting them, they said something, correct me if I'm wrong, Monica or Allie, but they were saying something about the um, percentages of families that they've had to feed over, you know, this crisis and through the pandemic has gone up triple. It was, it, I mean, it's amazing to see what they're doing there with such a small staff and how many people they're having to feed and just what the pandemic has right. created mm -hmm. for us as a community. And I feel like, you know, I think it started a lot with, um, the uh, Gen Z, or uh, sorry, the millennials, but now has even further been driven uh, the social impact. Um, you know, we actually have a talk coming up. I, I don't know if it's this next coming Monday or the one after about how even just marketing companies are having to change their messaging because everything is going towards the social impact market. I mean, the younger generations, that's what drives them. I, I think it's not so much just mm -hmm the company and the company name as much as is what does the company stand for? What are they doing? Are they making my community better? Are they moving us forward? And so I think it is actually perfect, Penny, what you were saying is just getting our kids involved in that early because it does matter to them. And a lot of our younger generation are driven that way. Um, so yeah, I, I think you're right on by those comments. I would suggest- well, And I would like to- Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Allie. I was just gonna say- as I, I was just gonna- Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to suggest that maybe collectively, if we were to get all of our students on a call once a week or, you know, once every two weeks where we can have them talk about maybe what they did in the community or what their experience is, that we could not only co-promote each other's camps and, and, you know, collectively talk about what technology is doing, but also to give them a chance to, to be recognized for their efforts. And for me, it's about team and it's about learning project management skills and, you know, learning about deliverables and all those business things that, that they really need to understand if they're going to go into a technology suited business. But to be honest, what thing today isn't built around technology? So tech aside and talking about the actual skills that they're learning, but rather give them an experience I think she froze. Allie, why don't you take it yeah, away? Yeah, say Allie. Yeah, because she's stuck well, there. I, I was just going to say, as an educator, I would urge everyone doing community service to create a log sheet that um, the, the, can be signed off on at each service site. So then those hours can count towards the kids' um, hours that they need for school or graduation. So you can just create like a generic community service log book and everywhere you go that has, um, you know, somebody r running that program, they can just sign off for the hours. Um, and then another program that I, I figured I would mention um, that's totally free, you can pay for the app, the upgrade to the app, but it's geocaching. Um, and geocaching is awesome. Um, it's basically a worldwide scavenger hunt and you just download the geocaching app and there's caches, which are like little boxes with um, uh, sign-in sheets in them, and some have like prizes in them. They're all over the world. There's a bunch in Palm Beach County, like thousands of them. 
Um, and you can have a good time hunting for these. And once you get good at it, you can even start planting them yourselves. But they're in national parks. They're in like, they're everywhere. Um, so geocaching is one of my favorite activities to do with kids um, as well. I've never heard of that. So I'm going to go look it up right after this. <laughs> oh yeah, it's super cool. Just, they have an app or geocaching.com, but it's pretty awesome. As a geographer, I approve this message. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it too, it's fun. Us nerds unite, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so is there, um, is there anything um, that you guys wanted to uh, talk about that we haven't or bring up in particular that I, I haven't asked about? So I know we've got about eight minutes left. I think one of the, the coolest opportunities for parents this summer is like Ashley, Ashley was saying, of build relationships. There's also um, a lot of parents that still have to work. So there's a few websites on, or groups on Facebook where college students are looking to connect with families to be the parent um, running the camp. Um, and so that's definitely an option. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is to really focus on the life skills. You can set yourself up as parents by using this time wisely over the summer. Teach your kids how to make their lunches, teach them how to cook, maybe do their laundry, um, you know, pick a different we life We have skill. setting up bank account day already. We yeah. have that in the plans. <laughs> so pick a different life skill each week and you can make a manual by the end of the summer. Um, and uh, and I think that would help ease everybody into a school year with the kids having more responsibility as well. I love that idea, Ali. <laughs> Give them more responsibility. I like it in a fun way. <laughs> yeah. No, and I think that's actually super, super important for parents to start thinking about while they're young, because I can't tell you how many times I've told somebody, I wish that somebody had done that with me earlier in life and made those kind of things that we look as just terrible responsibilities as an adult to make those things fun because whether we like it or not, they are going to be responsibilities as an adult and just making sure that they don't feel overwhelmed when that's kind of thrust upon them. Um, okay. Like you said, anything from just doing dishes to like my son actually uh, this year in sixth grade started a culinary class and he had said nothing about cooking before. I will admit right now publicly, I am not a good cook and that's my husband. So I, I was actually nervous. Like, I don't know how to help him with this class. I don't know what to do. I can't cook pancakes on my own. So he actually loves it. And now, I mean, he was reading a book all about, which I've never even knew was out there, the science of cooking. And it literally talks about the chemistry of like when you're cooking, how eggs react when you do have salt and don't have salt and what meat does, you know, with this. And it was actually very super interesting. So I think there's a lot of things that you can take that are general responsibilities and kind of look at the science behind them and make them STEM related. And that actually becomes more interesting than just a chore, you know? Nikki, yeah. look up um, America's Test Kitchen. There's uh, the, I think it, I think that's the name. I see Chris America's is shaking his head or nodding yeah. his head. But we actually the... also have through um, our nonprofit, the Community Classroom Project, we've launched the Community Classroom Kitchen in the wake of COVID that'll continue on. So each week we have meal boxes that can be ordered, um, whether they're family dinners, um, kid lunches, or baker's boxes. And each one comes with all the fresh ingredients and a recipe, and the kids' boxes come with um, information to work on academics and that as well. And then our chef has a whole series of videos that attach to it. Um, so there's all kinds of opportunities to do that. For every meal box purchased, we actually donate a box to a family in need. So that's, that's awesome. a way to like for your family to get cooking and help another family get cooking themselves. Um, but you can turn this into like a color war, you know, like camp always has like um, contests and competitions and color war is a big thing from summer camp when I was growing up. So just turning all of these life skills into competitions makes it a lot more fun. And as they like get better at it, they can earn a higher award and, um, just, you know, puff it up with some fun relay races around your house and, um, and things that you can do to keep the competition going in, in ways that aren't just around skill building. So it's a good balance. I like it. You're, you're adding gamification to, oh, yeah. <laughs> to everything. Oh, yeah. There. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I was going to mention, I love that idea, Allie, and there's a cool app that'll let you, um, track and assign or give them different tasks and it's kind of the gamification element that you were just mentioning 
and it can allow you to unlock or work toward a goal. So let's say they want to earn something at the end of summer, you know, as they do, let's say these learning activities or life skills, um, I, there, I, I should have looked up the names. I don't remember, but if you look for, um, you know what, I'll, I'll actually um, email it to you, Nikki. I'll find it and email okay. it. But it, it well, I believe I searched for like a tour manager. Sorry, go ahead. Alex. Sorry, I was just gonna say Class Dojo is a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one too. This one was, it was an app and um, it was specifically like you push a few different assignments and then they could earn badges. They were like life skills, like Ali was just mentioning. Um, but you had mentioned that cool uh, cooking book, which I've seen before. Um, Nikki, but mm -hmm. this is a really fun one that the kids might like. Her name is um, Rosanna Pacino, and what she does, she does a few cool things. One, I love that she's a YouTube influencer because it shows, you know, that you can become a great success using technology and sharing what you love. But she also creates the coolest treats, like um, a circuit board cake or Yoda <laughs> macaroons, or I don't know why it's coming up with that. Sorry, I skipped ahead too far, I guess. I'm trying to show you the, the end result product here, but she makes just really cute stuff. And a lot of times they're pretty easy to put together. And um, she has books now too, but she's just one example. There's a bunch of good ones, but you can see there's her Yoda macaroons. But um, I think it does a few things for kids. One, it shows that they can become YouTube influencers if they're interested. And two, you know, you know maybe a new subject they they might find really fun over the summer. That's awesome, yeah. That's great. And I, and I don't remember, I'm sorry, because I don't remember which one of you brought it up. Um, cause I was thinking about even for, uh, the older kids, I know, um, you guys may be aware in your communities cause they have like this supper club thing going on to support a lot of the, right. um, local restaurants. And I know that, um, one of our, uh, Palm Beach Tech members, she's been involved in our South Florida Tech community a lot is, uh, Robin DeLisser has been helping, um, get a lot of these communities up and running with the supper club. And they actually just introduced um, internship opportunities for the high school and college students with that as well. So I think there's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of things as far as resources, you know, online. I love Ashley that you brought up YouTube because I think just the younger generation right now, I mean, my kids, that's all I have to do is tell them, well, yeah, you know, a YouTuber's doing it and all of a sudden it's cool. So, <laughs> so if I said it, it's not as cool, but if it's a YouTuber that's doing it, all of a sudden it's instantly cool. So. <laughs> So that's, I think yeah. you should come up with an avatar and you should go on YouTube and that way we'll raise parents that way. Oh, well, I'm telling you, uh, just even being a part of Palm Beach Tech and having some of our videos on YouTube, my kids, all of a sudden I got street cred because now I have, you know, I'm on YouTube. So now you think mommy's a YouTuber. I'm like, not exactly, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I think these are, these are all great. Um, we're yeah, just Facebook at about Live doesn't here. count for the kids, right? No, 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 <laughs> that's right. They don't care about Facebook, yeah. the little ones. Discord um, or any of those other ones, yeah. Exactly. TikTok, if it's not too cringy. Um, I was I was also going to say, um, yeah, we're offering um, internships as well. Uh, we we created Dawson Studios um, to help you know with uh, my wife's uh, well with our YouTube Kids channel. So students that do go through our program get the opportunity to help you know contribute to that. And like to piggyback on what Penny was saying, I love like the the energy of this group and how everyone is sharing resources for, you know, for their kids and also promoting like what they're doing, whether it, it's free or whether it's paid. I think, um, you know, for, for myself at the beginning of COVID, I was going crazy because I never had to create a schedule for my kids. Um, and also have seen like the burnout. So I you know I think like the most important thing is, is yeah, like let's, let's keep our kids, entertain with you know positive things and give them the time to play the video games and give them time to like veg out and you know read books but also like remember that that we that we do have the power to you know influence and affect change and um you know especially with the times that we're we're going through right now where no one really knows what's going on i think it's you know it's a good time for us to help teach them how to reflect how to assess their situations, how to, you know, have life goals when, you know, in the middle of, of, of a storm, right? Like, how do you um, uh, be this thought leader? How, how, you know, although you might be eight or 10 years old, like you can be the voice of your generation. And it's through the guidance of, 
of, you know, what you guys are doing, you know, what we're all doing, uh, taking the right steps to make sure that they're influenced, that they feed the poor, that they, I don't know, pray for a homeless person, that they, you know, that they educate themselves and that they are um, doing everything that they can in their, their, in their power to, to remain, you know, um, calm, cool and collective, which is kind of hard thing to do, you know, I think even for adults. So just kind of having that um, perspective on it, I think will get all of us through the summer um, uh, on a safe note. I agree. Yeah, and we are uh, right about time. So that was a great last comment there to wrap that up. But um, yeah, if anybody wants to um, send any of the, yes, high five or clap, I never know what that symbol is, so I, but yes. <laughs> um, if any of you have, um, any links or any resources, anything that you want to send, we'll follow. We'll send a follow up to, um, you know, post online to some of the people that were in this chat and on Facebook today. So if you guys have any of that, we'll make sure to get that out to the parents um, and also to the Palm Beach County School District. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming on here today and sharing all this with you. At least as a parent, I feel much better with uh, some stuff I can look into. So thank you. Awesome. Definitely. Thanks. Thank you for letting us be part. Yes, of course. Everybody have a very good day, very good week, and uh, hopefully we will connect again soon. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.